easy for me. No pay, no play. No mm. deal, don't go on the field. It's that simple. I love it. Harry giving out advice. I want more advice from you. What advice would you give the Ravens? Well, this is easy. You know, since you guys are up there in New York, do the right thing, like the movie Spike Lee made. <laughs> Lamar Jackson has been the face of your franchise. He's done everything you've asked him to do. He's, he's go out there on the field. He performs at a high level. Pay the man what he deserves. Okay, so what advice would you provide to their beltway rival, the Commanders? You got to go out and get them. You look at the NFC right now, Jalen Hurts is the best quarterback in that conference. You look at the division, you have Dak Prescott, you have Daniel Jones, you have Jalen Hurts. You're going to be the only team without a quarterback. And I understand they may believe in Sam Howe, but Sam Howe hasn't played a lot of football in the National Football League. Go get Lamar so you can compete in that division and possibly do something in that conference. All right, there you go. Can make it very interesting around the beltway. And by the way, this was very interesting. The NFL sent out a memo to all clubs saying that teams wishing to discuss a contract with Lamar Jackson should not be dealing with a Florida man named Ken Francis, who is not certified by the NFLPA. Yeah, they actually, and this got weird. Now, the memo states in part, as an uncertified person, Mr. Francis is prohibited from negotiating offer sheets or player contracts or discussing potential trades on behalf of any NFL player. Now, Francis told ESPN's Jeremy Fowler that he has not contacted teams on Jackson's behalf. And then, by the way, Lamar, he was quick to respond to that. Someone was saying with talking to teams on his behalf, he said, stop lying. That man never tried to negotiate for me. He's responding to a reporter from the NFL Network on that one. Okay, so... This thing just got so weird. Je Jeff, what's going on here? Unnecessarily weird. I think the <laughs> NFL made this a bigger deal than it needed to be by getting this memo out there. The NFLPA is obviously very sensitive to the fact that one of the star players in the NFL is trying to get his deal done without a certified player rep, which, by the way, is a two-day course and $2,500 to get certified. <laughs> so it's not exactly like a, a doctorate. Uh, or, uh, yeah. So, it's you know, really instead... They want Lamar to hire an agent for 1% to 3%, so basically pay $2.5 million mm. to have Woo. someone be able to call a team to say, hey, do you want to talk to Lamar? I guess my point here is that it does – I think we're – I think this is all just mess to kind of <laughs> yeah. muddy the waters of a situation where – you know what the real thing is here? That – that no team right now of the 31 is interested in signing Lamar Jackson. They're not interested in giving two first-round picks up yep. and, and giving him that guaranteed money. And they are all certainly within their right to do that. But the idea that, that this is some bigger issue than it needs to be made into, it's not a big deal. It's true. It doesn't really mean much at all. And quite frankly, uh, maybe there needs to be something developed where a player doesn't need to be the one to hop on the phone with Bill Belichick and be like, hey, I don't have an agent, but we got to talk, yeah. me and you. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't want to go too far in the weeds in this because I don't no, think I hear the you. viewers I hear really you. care. Yeah. But I just think it's a situation where the focus needs to be on the fact that Lamar Jackson, it looks like the only true offer that he has right now is with the Baltimore Ravens. All right, seems like there's somebody out there is trying to throw him under the bus a little bit. What do you think about this? Oh, oh they definitely threw him under the bus. He's got tire tracks on his back and everything. <laughs> this is what happens when you rage against the machine. Mm. You talk about it, he doesn't have an agent. He's doing it in an unconventional way. H how is he supposed to get in contact with these teams? It's not like they all just have his phone number. So when you don't have an agent and agents want to protect the sanctity of what they do, how they make money, insiders, how they make money. They don't want any of that stuff to affect their bottom line. Yeah. So when I look at this for Lamar Jackson, I think, you know, we got the owners meetings coming up pretty soon, right? Maybe he should mm -hmm. send a cake to the owners meeting and say, if you want to win, put LJ in. It makes no <laughs> sense that 31 teams are saying, we don't want to touch this guy. There's something bigger going on here. I just think it's funny as well because Lamar's response on Twitter Putting out a promo for yeah. the, the invention that him and, and Ken Francis came up with, talking yeah. about the entire gym. I think it's hilarious because he's been the entire offense for the Baltimore Ravens for every <laughs> year that he's been there. I like the connection. I'll work with that. All right, Harry, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I don't like it because Lamar Jackson is a wonderful human being. He's a wonderful player on the football field. But what we're seeing right now is uh, numerous of, of outlets trying to, you know, put him in a light to, to not get the deal that he, number one, earned and he, number two, deserves. And I just don't think it's a good look. 
But right now, like Robert, like RG3 said, when you go against the machine, they're going to try to throw everything at you so mm -hmm. you don't go against the machine. You know, and, and I, agents do play an important role in negotiations. I, really, I mean, you had, you had a player rep your entire I career, did. right? And I like, did. I, I, you could make a really good case that Lamar probably should have an agent, and that's fine. You can do that. But the idea that we need to be like digging so far into the weeds that they need to send this memo out and make this business partner of Lamar Jackson out to be some like clown show. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it just feels a little gross to me, but I'm not trying to disparage what agents player reps do. They have yeah, an important right. role. I just, yeah, no, I, I get that. And, but we shouldn't forget that there's a lot of players out there all across sports that yeah. don't have agents, get great deals done yeah. and things happen. Laramie Tunzel just negotiated for the second time, a deal by himself to become the highest paid tackle in football. Yeah. Uh, what I would say is this, you know, I said this yesterday when the, when the glasses go on, the facts yeah. come out. We talk about Lamar Jackson with the Ravens. They're three and eight in the 11 games that he's missed the last two years, right? Averaging 16.4 points a game without Lamar. That's worse than the worst offense in the league, which was Houston over the past two years. If I'm Lamar Jackson, I don't think I need an agent, but I'm reaching out to a guy like David Mulligetta who negotiated mm -hmm. the contract that I'm trying to exceed. Not mm -hmm. to say hey, I need you to represent me, but just to say, Give me some advice on yeah. how to approach this. Okay. That's what I would do. Fair uh, enough. But, Let me quickly go to yeah, Harry. Yeah, yeah. Hey, let's hand up. Go ahead, Harry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, here's the thing that, that really bothers me, right? In, in, in the history of the NFL, we had two people who have been a unanimous MVP winner. Ooh. Tom Brady and Lamar Jackson. What? We on here talking about one of the people that was a unanimous MVP award winner. That's the part that, that, that's mind-boggling to me. That's the part that's really bothering me, and it upsets me to my core. The, the relationship advice to the Ravens and Lamar Jackson is, every great relationship is about compromise. You guys were meant for each other. We don't always get everything that we want in life, so there's gotta be some compromise. Lamar, you might have to take a little less than you want, and the Ravens, you might have to give a little more than you want, <laughs> but you can do it. You guys were meant for each other. Lamar Jackson is that city. He is that team. Make it happen. I love it. A perfect marriage. All right, enough love. Let's talk about the NFL, shall we? They sent out a memo to all clubs. Yeah, let's get that music on. Okay, let's send a memo <laughs> to all clubs saying that teams wishing to discuss a contract with Lamar should not be dealing with a Florida man named Ken Francis, who is not certified by the NFLPA. Now, listen to this. The, the memo states in part, as an uncertified person... Mr. Francis is prohibited from negotiating offer sheets, player contracts, or discussing potential trades on behalf of any NFL player. Now, Francis told ESPN's Jeremy Fowler that he has not contacted teams on Jackson's behalf. And by the way, Lamar was quick to respond to someone that was talking to teams on his behalf, responding on Twitter to an NFL Network reporter saying, stop lying. That man never tried to negotiate for me. <laughs> I mean, I can imagine this got to be frustrating for Lamar, but I got to tell you, Jeff, I was so confused by all this. What is happening? As a Florida man, <laughs> why do we always have to be singled out because of the state with which we reside? It's like, come on. Just because he's a Florida man, immediately we're not supposed to trust that he can negotiate a contract? Well, Look, uh, uh, I won't comment on that, but no, go ahead. What's but, going on? But on a serious <laughs> note, I don't think that we have to make too much about this. You know, the NFL, by putting out that memo, is simply doing its job. They have an obligation on behalf of the NFLPA to let teams know if this person is NFLPA certified. And he is not. That being said, I think that we need to kind of move beyond what feels like maybe the superficial kind of slop around this situation and really just recognize that the fact that Lamar Jackson even needs to be reaching out to teams to say, hey, guys, by the way, I'm available, mm -hmm. seems like probably the, the best symbolism for what's going on with Lamar right now. Like, his only option right now is the Baltimore Ravens. Look, if, if this was a situation where he had a lot of people coming after him, we wouldn't be talking about who it was that was communicating on behalf of Lamar. It would just be teams calling Lamar being like, you're the unanimous MVP in this league at 26 years old. We will give two first-round picks and do whatever it takes to get you. That is not right. happening. Yeah. That, to me, is the bigger story. Uh, and I think that we need to keep our eyes and our focus on the real thing here, which is not just a person who is not NFLPA certified reaching out on Lamar's behalf. Right, and it speaks to everything that's going around in the situation. So, Tim, what do you make of this? Listen, um, Lamar Jackson's a great player. It, he appears to be a bad businessman. I, I, like, I, that's all I can really say. Like, and I, I look at this situation, it reminds me a little bit of Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell had the f franchise tag placed on him. 
They, the Steelers did it again a second year. He did not play football that next year. Look, he maybe was doing it on principle. He maybe thought that the running back position or the position he was playing at the time because he was catching a lot of balls out of the backfield was worth more. The, the moral of the story for Le'Veon Bell was he cost himself well over $10 million by doing that. Like, it, it just – it was a bad business decision. I get it that guys don't like writing checks to their agents – but in Lamar's situation, he could clearly negotiate down the percentage. He could. There are plenty of agents that would love to represent Lamar Jackson that are more qualified or that are qualified to do it that he could negotiate the percentage on. I just like here's the thing. I just think he's hurting himself. Like ultimately, I think he's hurting himself by refusing to hire an agent uh, and not relying on people that are in this business. And this idea that a team can't reach out and contact him. I'm just not buying it. You want to find out how to get a hold of Lamar Jackson? Contact the PA. Say, give us Lamar Jackson's number. We want to reach out to him to, to negotiate with him. I, I just, I think it's been handled poorly, and I think it's costing him money. Well, I, a couple of things there. I, I, I think, first of all, like, to compare him to Le'Veon Bell feels premature. Oh, yeah. Lamar Jackson hasn't missed any games, nor has he threatened to miss any games. In fact, but last Jeff, year he's he, already he's already cost himself money. But, but if he had an agent, he'd maybe have a deal like Kyler Murray, by the way. But what if we don't know what his deal is ultimately going to be? What if he continues to hold essentially the Ravens hostage and gets to the point where they say, you know what, we will give you the deal? We don't know exactly where this ends up. So, I mean, I think that before we judge whether this was a proper negotiation or not, I understand he has to follow the rules and have an NFLPA certified person who takes a two day seminar and pays $2,500 to contact teams. I get that. And he needs to find a way to make sure that he follows the rules and, and he can do so. But ultimately, we are not at the finish line yet. Yep. So I just think we went through this exercise with Dak Prescott for two years where we scrutinized every step of the way. And at the end of it, when he did get paid, we said, wait, did the Cowboys just overpay Dak Prescott? Exactly. I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, Tim. I think that he could benefit from an agent. But I also think that we need to get to the finish line before we look back on this and say that we know exactly we got to let history play out before we can determine whether I, it was right or wrong. I yeah. think part of the challenge here is it's taking a long time to get to the finish line. So what do you make of it? 100 percent. I think that, you know, Tim's fighting for the establishment and Lamar Jackson is fighting against the machine. That's what he wants to do. He wants to make sure that players can get guaranteed contracts. And if you as a quarterback, a, a unanimous MVP can negotiate a deal by yourself and become the highest paid player at your position, NFL agents do not want that to happen. So we're seeing a lot of, quote, unquote, agent sabotage because they don't want the, what Lamar is trying to do to become the norm. And I think it is premature to compare him to Le'Veon Bell. It is premature to judge the situation right now. I've heard multiple people, multiple people say that he's losing money, but I don't look at it that way. I look at Lamar. He's a very principled young man. He's going to do what he wants to do, how he wants to do it. And if he doesn't have any other offers, then he's going to have to figure out something with the Baltimore Ravens. If he doesn't want to be in Baltimore, he has to come out and say that. Mm. That's, up to, that's up to Lamar Jackson to make that decision. We can't do that for him. But this could all turn out to be the best thing that's ever happened to the league, the best thing that's happened for the players. Every player should be rooting for Lamar Jackson to win. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.